I guess my next question is, what is it that you all truly stand for? Because, I mean, of course we get, like, all the stuff that we can see online and stuff. I guess my, my concern with it is that, at least in the time that I've been here and been able to see, um, we had an event where Charlie Kirk was able to come. And, you know, if you were there or if you heard about that event, you heard, like, you had neo-Nazis coming, you heard you had traditional workers' party. And the thing about that is, you know, throughout the course of the night, um, you know, people who would be in Turning Point would say, like, we don't condone that type of behavior, we don't condone that type of ideology. However, the thing about it is, that's how far they would go. It's an organization that, yes, is here for one thing, but it attracts a certain group of people. Yeah, I guess. So first off, this is a great question. I also want to commend him on just being civil, right? I think this is like this is where we get like the most productive things done is just having a normal conversation and saying what your concerns are. Okay. So Charlie Kirk, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, can we just give him an applause for being a normal person? Like, he just earns an applause. Okay. So Charlie Kirk, when he was going around on campuses, saying the exact same things that he's always been saying, that like he believes in free markets and he believes in capitalism and he believes that the government has overextended its reach into every layer of our society. Mm -hmm. There was no following. Um, uh, the second Charlie Kirk got stepped on a plane and started going around with Donald Trump, suddenly everywhere he showed up, uh, neo-Nazis started showing up. These people that were never there when he was just Charlie Kirk say, saying his ideas, right? Uh, what you have to accept is that politics has become a very nasty game, right? And if they don't want you to see an idea or to be presented with a different idea, they will shield you by saying to you, don't even listen to what this person has to say. Just know that outside there are KKK members. So obviously what this person has to say can be wrong. Ben Shapiro is the greatest example of this. I don't know if you've ever heard Ben Shapiro speak, and I do want to personally invite you, we will pay for your travel, like I said to her, to come down to the Student Action Summit and to hear the biggest, most prominent conservative um, speakers that come together um, in Florida at the Palm Beach event, right? You should definitely come down and just hear it. What they're saying is, it, it's just common sense, right? It, it just, they're talking about what they believe and why they believe it. And now all of a sudden, these ideas that we don't need the government is, is being met with mass protests. I was at the SAS event when people were protesting outside. We had Antifa thugs who looked like kids that are in their basement, right? Like, come outside and say it was a racist convention, which was crazy to me because there were so many black people on the inside that were coming out, taking pictures of them, calling them racist. So that is why I think the most important thing you have to understand is, like, what I always talk about is how to create a mind, right? Mm. If they can scare you away from even hearing the idea, you're never going to hear the idea because you're going to start to say this must be the brand. Charlie Kirk has adamantly denounced KKK, Nazis, white supremacy. These people have never been in touch with Turning Point ever. But now that he announces where he's going to speak, everywhere Charlie Kirk speaks, white supremacists, which I'm convinced are hired and they're paid for, show up to his events. And all he is saying is what I am saying here today is that I don't think we need the government. We need more government. I think we need less of it. I think we need, and that's what Turning Point is about. I think we need free markets. We need capitalism. We need to encourage entrepreneurship. And I think that that's been discouraged over the last few years because government is so involved. I have a cousin. I come from a family that's very much on welfare. And he and his girlfriend had this idea that they wanted to start a food truck. What they had to go through and pay to even like go outside and try to sell food discouraged him from being an entrepreneur. He's like, I'm not going to do that. That's crazy. Kids that want to have a lemonade stand, which was totally fine in the 90s. I think the 90s were like the good years, in my opinion, by the way. Bring back like, you know, all of the 90s TV shows when everything was um, about pretty much what I'm talking about is inspiring children to say, go out and be whatever you want to be. You can't even have a lemonade stand now without having to have a government permit. You can't go be a dog walker right now in the state of California because they saw that, that was becoming a business people were able to do by themselves without getting government permits. That's crazy. It's absolutely insane. The government is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're taking more and more money at the same time. They're discouraging people from entrepreneurship, and that is essentially what Turning Point is about, and that's what our number one slogan is, big government sucks. That's it. And this is now being called, and this is why I'm here today, is that these kids got calls who believe that big government sucks, right? Which is a theory that, in my opinion, helps black America, right? Because welfare system has completely decimated our communities, right? Well, the thing about it is, especially when you look at it, when you look at who's the recipients of welfare, it's not necessarily, like, predominantly African American. No, it's, it's actually not. been shown that it's predominantly affecting and predominantly used by people who are of Caucasian descent. Well, that's because they're a bigger population. We only represent 13% of the population. Well, of course, even yeah. if it's a, but even if it is a bigger population, you still have to break it down to those like, yeah, and, basic and, and, numbers. Look, look, I so I do talk, agree. Yeah, you're right. I t and I always talk about the black community because I'm black and that's what I bring to the turning point table is my mission in life. I make it very clear is to wake up the black community to what mm -hmm. I think has become um, a system that's kept us down. But 
everybody that's on welfare, their, their lives are being negatively impacted. They're being de-incentivized, right? I see this with my cousins. Why go get a job or try to do better if the government's going to write you a check to sit on your ass? Mm. Why, why go get a job when you know that if you don't have a job, you get free health care? You, you know how much they take out for health care if you go get a job? Well, you don't have to pay that if you, if you don't get a job, mm. right? I have cousins that have... Um, a lot of children out of wedlock. That's more money every child you have out of wedlock. The welfare system discourages black women from marrying the, the fathers of their children. The single motherhood rate has jumped 71% since the welfare system was, was um, uh, LBJ's Great Society Act. Those are all problems of the government getting too big. And that's what these socialists on campus are advocating for. They're saying socialism is great. It's obviously not great. The black community is the best example of why welfare programs and taking from certain people and redistributing it, which they don't do healthily, right? It's not free at all because governments are corruptible. Behind governments are just human beings. You think I'm a bad person. Why would you trust your government? But then I would ask you the question and then who are the people that are in those positions of power behind your government? That's the big what, question. What well, the thing about it is we keep saying, you know, the government's getting this big or this big or this big or this big, but we're not asking the question of like who is in charge. I asked, like, I asked that question on my Twitter power. feed today. You know? And yeah, it's, that's a great question. It's well, a great question. And the thing about it, though, is that we're saying, at least at least in my perspective, at least from what I've seen, I'm not going to put this back, at least from what I've seen, it's those those people who are, you know, advocating for those lesser governments, those are those biggest those uh, business people. Those are those people that are in those entrepreneurial positions already. And whether that was because they decided to go off with an idea that they had 10 years ago or it's because of a family industry that they've been able to adopt you have to realize that there's still these big people in power that yes are promoting these ideas of less um of less government but because it does at the end of the day help to create their business and help to get it stronger but that's and so, good for us so the thing is why do we keep demonizing the rich when the rich that's what that's what creates jobs that's what makes people able to get off of welfare when there's more jobs people get upset when corporations get a tax break do you want to know what happened to my liberal sister when corporations got a tax break she got two thousand dollar check and then she said all right well let me see maybe, maybe i'll consider voting for donald trump in 2020 right because she saw the results she was so afraid of that right the idea that corporations would get a tax break and that they wouldn't give more to the government, but what is what history has shown is that when the government takes left less, people are incentivized to do more for indi on an individual to individual basis. So I'm guessing, are you thinking, are you bringing this your position? Are you bringing it back to trickle down economics theory from Ronald Reagan? Is what you're thinking? What, absolutely, I 100 percent believe that. If, if, as the more the government gets out, the better that these companies will take care of their employees. I'm not saying just corporations should get tax breaks. Mm. That's why I think people try to make when they demonize, they make it seem like oh, corporations are getting tax breaks. That's not true. As we've seen, so many. People People that are, are low, low employees got, got so much more money back, are getting more money, seeing more money in each of their checks now, like my sisters, right? So that's not the point that I'm, that, that I'm making. What I'm saying is that they are able to go out and hire more of a workforce. That's what we need. Rich people are the solution to poverty, and somehow they've been demonized and punished over the years for, for building companies. I mean, what everybody should go out and do. Well, I hear what you're saying, but I, I feel like I would disagree with you on the piece about rich people necessarily being the ones to really be able to save us. I mean, if you really look at it, especially in the history of the United States, those who were in an upper class and those who were able to get those resources were able to, I guess, expend people and were also able to use people only for their gain. You know what I'm saying? And no, it's like because that, that's what free markets allows for. So if you're what you're what you're saying is not a bad point. You're saying mm -hmm. a good point, which is like, okay, well, if this guy gets super rich, and he's going to say, well, I'm only going to pay my employees ten dollars an hour, right? Mm -hmm. But then guess what? If that guy does that over at GE, right? Then the other guy who works at so and so can say, I can steal your employees by paying you more. That's what free markets allows for. It's a competition, right? So they have to. Well, that's what happens when when the government gets out and lets people regulate themselves. Is that there's competition, and when there's competition, there's always someone bigger. There's always someone better. There's always someone that's willing to pay their employees more. So you're so going to leave that company. He yeah. needs employees. So then I guess my next question is then, so then why is it that the emphasis is more towards rich people when the emphasis, at least in my opinion, feels like it should be more towards the people, the common man, the, the of course the working class man and everything like that, but people like us. Yeah, you but know, that's what Turing Point's all about. So we're all mm -hmm. about the people. So I'm just talking to you right now because we're talking about, you know, my ideas and what I believe in. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying that overall we have to stop demonizing rich because we need them or else the government steps in and we all become dependent on the government, right? Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. That's what I'm talking about when I say entrepreneurship. That's what I'm talking about when I say why we need the government to step away so people aren't afraid to start businesses because they get so taxed 
and they have so many regulations that they have to follow before they can even get out of the gate. That's what needs to stop, and that is literally exactly when we talk about Make America Great Again, which they made it seem like it was some white nationalist headline. That's what he was talking about. The, the time when people could go have a lemonade stand and not get stopped by a police officer and say, hey, do you have a license for this lemonade stand to be on this corner? That's all Turning Point's about. That's what I'm trying to let people know on this campus. These are not crazy white supremacists, and you 100% have to, you and you, come to the Student Action Summit in December, and I want you, I want to challenge you, I want to call you out when I'm on a stage and say, these two people are on the left, and, and so much courage for you guys for coming in and just being able to listen to this. That's all we're asking for. Will you come? Uh, you know maybe. I'm, asking I'm actually on a date. graduating in May. <laughs> you can still come. <laughs> you know, we'll see. Why not? It's in December. Well, turning point, we'll, we'll get you linked up, we'll get you flights, you come down, you sit in a room and you hear Ben Shapiro speak, you hear Tucker Carlson speak, you hear all these people that you have been told are awful, crazy white nationalists. You hear Dennis Prager speak, right? And you walk away and you let me know if you really believe what the media has been selling to you. That's what it's all about. Get in the room and see what you're being told. See if it's true. Well, I think the other thing, I guess, at least in my perspective, I think the disconnect, at least between turning point and, you know, people on the left, I guess, I guess my thing about it is, so I actually ended up going to the Charlie Kirk event, and I ended up sitting in and kind of listening, and I don't know, it's just interesting because it's like, a lot of a lot of the information that he was presenting, I felt like I needed to make sure I researched it up or like checked it out real quick, because I, I looked at it and some of the facts and statistics that I was able to find, I think didn't match up with what I was totally finding, and I think the other disconnect is that I would say the dis the other disconnect and what needs to be emphasized is language, and I think the language that is being used within Turning Point USA and the language that is being used with maybe people on the left is that everybody's kind of like throwing these words out, um, but one side is having a totally different definition while the other side is having a totally different definition from that, and I think one of those best examples is that um, Charlie Kirk when he was here, he ended up um, talking about like what he thought the definition of racism was. Right. And I was able to look at it and see that at least what he said was totally not from what, was totally different from what I would initially heard. So I guess my question is what, I guess my question is with Turning Point, what, what is the disconnect that at least you all see between these two sides that is not necessarily, oh, this side won't listen to us, or oh, this side won't listen to us? Truly, no. so that, really quick, we have to yeah. take you to the airport super soon, so yeah. we're going to do one more question after this, and then unfortunately we have to stop. Sorry to interrupt. So I think that we can't ignore that, though. We can't ignore what we saw here today, okay? Everybody was sitting here asking questions. Everyone was invited to sit down. And every single person that we saw come in here and get violent, uh, one girl literally told me that I had to think a certain way because I was black, which I thought was the most ludicrous point of the day, right? Every time we saw a name being washed, somebody being called something, it was coming from the left. Um, they, sing, they say that they're super tolerant, right? And I'm, and I'm going to give the respect here to say that she was super tolerant um, and she was respectful. And, and even though we disagree on some things, like she was fundamentally willing to have a conversation. What they do is that they pass everybody. Like, the first thing you say is, okay, well, Charlie Kirk, you know, he was here and white nationalists were outside. That is what people are thinking instantly. They're not willing to even listen. They're not willing to have a conversation because somebody else has already told them that this idea is, is belongs to white supremacy and the KKK, and that couldn't be further from the truth. If Charlie Kirk is a white nationalist, and he hired me as his top employee, he's doing a really bad job at White Nationalism, right? Like, we can agree with that, right? People don't care about that stuff. They pretend that I don't exist. And they continue driving the same narrative. They, they continue to call the people that are here racist and sexist, and that's fundamentally wrong. There can be no conversation if you're going to say that just because you think this way, you're a racist or a sexist. That exclusively comes from the left. I know that because I, I came from the left. I was a liberal. I was a leftist. And this is why I left the left. This is why so many prominent people are leaving the left. It's because it's becoming this system of totalitarianism. Either with us, you're against us mob mentality. They are the most violent people that you see on campus. That girl was enraged. I don't know if you were here when she was here with the two different hair colors. She was enraged. She was upset at my existence here. And she couldn't out a question. She wanted to yell at me and tell me what I had to think because I was black. I'm not here to tell you what you have to think. I'm here to tell you that tell you there's a different perspective and I would love to invite you to hear my perspective and to hear the perspective of other prominent conservatives who, by the way, all disagree with each other on certain topics.
Ben Shapiro and Charlie Kirk disagree on certain things, right? Like, you know, and, and Ben Dennis Prager disagree on certain things. I disagree with Charlie on things. But the one thing that we all agree on is that we're allowed to think differently. <laughs> Well, I definitely do agree with you on some things. I think the one thing, though, that I, I mean, if I could give you some advice, I think the one thing, though, would not to be, would be to not give too many general, like, generalizations, I would say. Because at least in my experience, what I've seen is that not necessarily, it's not either one side or the other that's more violent or more aggressive. I've seen some horrendous things on either side. I've seen things on this plaza. I've seen um, people who have leaned more conservative that I've said, you know, the worst place for an unborn child to be was in the stomach of a black woman. I've heard that. I've heard these things from both yeah. sides. So I think... That's true though, right? Were the, would, do you know the stats of, of black babies being what, what, what they've done to us? And I'm like adamantly opposed to my parent because it's literally decimated the black... It, it's killed 17 million black babies since the 1970s. Whoa. That's that's scary. Like that, so that. So I think the language that you're saying is it's it's inflammatory, right? So it makes you think. What are you saying, right? But when you what what they're trying to do is to cause a reaction, and, and what you're disagreeing with is, is the strategy to make you say, why would you say that? So what I say to everybody is, do not talk to me about Black Lives Matter unless there are Black people outside boycotting Planned Parenthood. Okay, because that is the number one killer of black people in this country is Planned Parenthood. They put them in neighborhoods that black people live in. They encourage black people to kill their babies. And there's no people that are more negatively affected by Planned Parenthood than black people, which was started on the concept of eugenics, of getting rid of black people from the population. So I'm really against uh, Planned Parenthood, but I get what you're saying about the language being inflammatory to... So I, I, I hear what you're saying, especially with the Planned Parenthood piece, and this is like, it is this thing where Planned Parenthood was necessarily made for that eugenics movement, I definitely understand that. However though, Planned Parenthood wasn't necessarily the thing that put pe black people in lower income communities. That was actually red line districting. No, you're right. Right. By state no, no, I didn't say that. I just said that it's a huge. When you're talking about black lives, right? Mm. You, people will tell you about police gunning down black people, which happens virtually never. Sixteen unarmed black men. Stephen Clark just got shot in California. Yeah, no, but, but, but you want to know how you know that it virtually never happens? Because we can name every single one of the black people that it's happened to, which is pretty amazing, black right? Black men or black women? Black, well. black men. Black men. So okay? what about so, black women? So, so, yeah, but here's here's here's, here's, the, here's the stat, right? So here's mm. the stat of black people that are gunned down by police officers. I'm, I'm making a point. Give me one second. Give me one second. I'm making a point. Okay. 0.0004% of the black population, okay, is unarmed and shot and killed by a black person per year, okay? Mm. More black people are, are, are struck by lightning. That's a fact, okay? Fine, if you want to say that it's something we have to talk about when it happens, horrendous things that happen, I agree with it. If you think I would ever stand up here and defend what happened to Blando Castillo, that was horrific to watch. I watched it crying. But my question is always, if this is how you are willing to be reactive and upset and to get upset and, and fly into the streets about a black life when it's lost and it's only 0.004%, three zeros, four percent of the population, why aren't you outside of Planned Parenthood where they are ripping black fetuses out of black skin? Don't tell me you care about black lives if you're not willing to boycott Planned Parenthood. That well, is my point that I always the issue, make. especially if you go into the context of Black Lives Matter, is not necessarily that it's just focused on police brutality, but it's focused on the systemic problems and issues that are surrounded with police brutality and the systemic problems and issues that are surrounded within the black community based on the system of white supremacy and capitalism and a lot of the stuff really going down to the fundamental development of the United States. Right. And I think when we go and talk about this conversation about, um, especially about uh, Planned Parenthood, things like that, um, I do agree with you that, yeah, there are certain issues within Planned Parenthood, but I think the other thing about it is when people think about Planned Parenthood, the first thing they think about is abortions. Um, but they don't address or think about all the stuff that they do in terms of sexual responsibility and sexual safety and things that, like that. That's a really harmful ideology to, to that, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, So Hitler and, and the concentration camps, okay, mm. he exterminated six million Jews. Mm. So what, what if I said to everybody, I don't know why Hitler gets a bad reputation. I mean, he, they, they never talk about the fact that he also was building these amazing tanks to help protect the German people. Mm. Because you were still exterminating Jews. You're exterminating human beings. The number one thing is you are murdering people. I don't care what you're doing outside of that. I don't care if Hitler said, hey, we also provide free breast exams. Mm. I don't care. You're exterminating people. You're murdering someone. There is no way to justify murder, ever. And that gets me, I'm so passionate about it. And I say to you, I will never, ever, ever take Black Lives Matter seriously until they start talking about Planned Parenthood and the, the fetuses and babies that have been ripped out of their stomachs.
stomachs of black mothers. That's it. That, I mean, that's like the harshest thing. Fortunately, I do have to run because I'm, I'm going to miss my I'm going to miss my flight. Um, but I really appreciate the conversation. I really would like you to take me up on the offer. They'll link you up. We're all these turning point people. Do you mind get, getting these two people down to Florida for the? And I just want to come here, have you do different ideas. And we'd love to interview you and get it on the website after you guys hear the different ideas and just say what you think. And you're going to be surprised. Everyone will welcome you there. There's like you know like people. We want people that don't think like us to come see what we're about and tell us what you think. You're never going to get booed. You're never going to get yelled at. You're never going to see what you saw today. People running up and getting upset. Um, and if you walk away and you say, you know what, that was, I'm glad I saw that, and I disagree with everything that they said in there, you have a right to do that. That's that's the point of us being individuals. Mm. So I really appreciate your time. Of course. All right. Thank you. All right, everybody. I'm, just, I'm serious. Like we're, we're trying to actually ask some questions. I'm, I really want you to get this, the attention. You see this, guys? No, no, I'm not. This is what she does. It doesn't she exist. Interacts. You want, you want to have a conversation about Candace, something that doesn't exist. Do you want me to go away? Okay? Do you want me to go yes, away? Yes, I would really appreciate it. Then I want you, you to look there at my down. buddy, and I want you to say, <laughs> "Social autopsy was a bad idea." No, I'm, I, you don't own this. This is what she does. This is she no, refuses to admit that it was a bad idea, even though it would have targeted leftists and conservatives. It never existed. It never got built. Keep that in mind. It doesn't matter. Okay, an idea that never came into fruition is not what I'm going to defend today. Come on, this isn't about. Or you got your you got your clip, you can run it. I'm asking you to just allow us to keep talking about more. All right. That's it. You're, you're, you did good. Okay, Candace. You guys, everybody give me a round of applause. Thank you. All you're right. really good. You got the clip. Mm. Right. Thank you, Candace. You're welcome. You have a great rest of your week, sweetheart. Me too. All right, next. Can we have an inflammatory conversation about feminism? That's always fun. Anybody? Come on. Sure. Any other civil leftists? Anybody I'm not else? Anything up. Want to get into the hot seat? Four feet. Yes. Nobody so, like, else? Okay, can we ask about the, uh, the social autopsy? So I, I spoke about that guy and called him a country boy. Would that be like something where you're trying to say that I'm discriminating against country boys? Am I in trouble? Am I in trouble, folks? Hey, don't get quiet now. It'd make it a little awkward. Does anybody else want to talk about our